What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolarsPLC.com. Welcome back to another instruction tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the move instruction, which seems to be fairly straightforward, but it is actually used very, very extensively in many different PLC ladder logic programs. So we're going to get into a very uh, meaty and practical world example in this tutorial and let's just jump right into it so i have a simple program like i said set up here but first we're going to look at very simple rungs so in rung number zero what the move instruction does is essentially move a value from one integer into another and all this really is is just a copy for uh, whatever is is in this system int zero is getting copied into this system int one so nothing uh, nothing extremely complicated whatever uh, integer i can throw at it it's going to um, it's going to put that in the other one of course it does respect all the mathematical constraints so an integer needs to hold the right amount of bits that being said a very straightforward application there you can also use this on reels you can also use this on synths as well as dints so here it's a second rung which essentially copies just the real value so 234.23 is going to get copied into this uh, different real value so nothing uh, particularly interesting happening there but essentially the move instruction takes a particular register the value stored in it and puts it in the other register and of course the applications are absolutely endless this can be used in many different ways so here i have a system which essentially allows uh, for monitoring of different conditions as it steps through a sequential process. So uh, a system like this can actually be implemented in what's called a sequencer. And this is a more advanced instruction, which we're going to look at a uh, future video. But for purposes of very simple uh, systems, this is very, very uh, often implemented through a move instruction. So let's look at this in, in a bit more detail. So in my first rung, I have this system start bit. And if my system int Two, which essentially uh, think of that as my register for the status of the system. Uh, if it's equal to zero, we are going to allow the system to start. So I'm going to toggle this. And as I start the system, you will notice that the move instruction executed, it moved this one into this uh, system int two. So this rung essentially can never execute. Um, now on the next rung, what we have is if the system is set to one, right? So it's comparing this one to whatever is set in the register. And in this case, it is one, then we are going to start this motor one. So essentially a start signal has been set to a particular motor of area one. Um, of course, nothing is tied in in the real world at the, at the moment, um, but it is staying in this in this essentially in this rung. So the, the system is going to try and start this motor one until the motor one is at target speed. And once the motor is at target speed, it is going to move to the next step. So this is a very critical um, piece of information, I guess, because here you can implement a very, very uh, basic timer. So for example, if this motor has not been a target speed, for example, for, uh, you know, if it takes your motor five seconds to ramp up, if it hasn't been a target speed after 10 seconds, you have a certain failure in your system. So you want to shut it down and you want to prevent it from going further. But essentially here, it's just waiting for that start uh, to complete and for the motor to be a target. Once the motor is a target, I'm just manually toggling this with control T. So once the motor is at target speed, you'll notice that the system has stepped to the next sequence or the next rung. And in this case, that rung is just looking for motor two. So very similarly, once it's at target speed, the system can move on to the next process. The next step is going to be heat a boiler. So this is just, once again, this is just an example, but you get, I want you to really understand the idea here. So the next Next step is going to be to heat the boiler. Once the boiler has reached temperature, we are going to step to the next rung. And at this point, since all of those sequences have completed in a very sequential manner, the system is currently running. So the system is running, it is operating as expected, but that's not all. Now you need to look for faults. And actually at any point in time, you need to look for faults. And for example, if you have this system faulted bit, so here, um, if whatever fault, uh, and of course we can detect it in many different ways. I made a video uh, right before this about different alarms and how to detect them. But if the system is faulted, we're going to move this 99 into our integer. So let's look at this for a second. So as soon as we move that 99, you will notice that the system is no longer running. So it's in this shutdown state. And at this point, if it's equal to 99, you can of course implement stop routines for your motors. You can de-energize your uh, safety circuit. You can drop out air, so on and so forth. 
And in order to reset the system, you'll have a push button. So of course, if the faults are clear, if this fault bit is, uh, so if it's of course energized, then there's no point in pressing this reset. You can press uh, however many times you want, it's always going to reset back to that faulted state. However, if the fault is gone, you hit this reset, you will notice that the system is back at zero and now the process can repeat all over again. So once we start the system, you will notice that this one is being transferred over into that register. And once again, we need to start the motor one. We need to finalize that to be at target. We need to start motor two, so on and so forth. So essentially it creates this sequence of events through a uh, an implementation of this move function. And it allows you to monitor different conditions throughout the step. And of course you can use this in many different creative ways if you have a system of conveyor belts, you know, you can move one box through the system. Once it's at a certain position, you can energize a different conveyor. So just a whole lot of different uh, implementations when it comes to uh, the move function. And this is one of the common ways that it's actually been used. And I've seen this at different plants uh, implemented exactly like this. But at, the, at its core, all it's doing is uh, shifting uh, essentially values from one register into the other one. And once again, this could be done in cents, ints, dints and real values. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.